All right, well, I wanted to go through a quick demonstration of how some of the um, Nimble plugin integration works in vSphere 6 client. Um, and I'm going to run this demonstration from my lab. Uh, basically, I've got a, a couple um, sets of arrays grouped together in the lab, and they're all connected into um, the VMware 6 uh, vCenter environment. Um, v, as you can see here, I'm logged into um, the web client for vSphere, and I've already created some um, some data stores that are listed here under my folder. Um, so for managing existing data stores that are running on a Nimble, things are pretty straightforward. Um, you simply find your data store, and if you right-click on them, there is a context menu for Nimble storage actions, and it gives me the option to edit it, delete it, clone it, make it bigger, can snapshot it. Um, the cloning process, we'll try that. So in this particular case, I say, what do we want to name it? I call this test clone. There we go. Doesn't like a dash at the beginning. There we go. So we're just going to do one clone. Um, we're going to use an existing snapshot here. So if I want to do a clone from something that already exists, I might do the use existing, and it'll give me a list of all the snapshots that are there. I can go back quite a ways here. Um, let's see, the last snapshots here are from 118, so it's been a few days, 17. So we'll just pick one of these, it doesn't matter. This is one of my um, weekday snapshots from 118 at 5.33. And once that's selected, we'll hit clone. And it will go through the process of mounting that snapshot and then creating a data store associated with it. We can see right down here in our recent tasks the progress on that. It's one of the things I do like about and managing this way is that you're able to have it all logged in vCenter, which is nice from a compliance standpoint, also nice from a troubleshooting standpoint to have a log of all the modifications and, and whatnot that happen on your storage right in your the primary place where you're managing all your infrastructure. Okay, well, well that finishes up. We'll see it here in a minute. Um, Uh, some of the other options and stuff you have, uh, I'll just, I'm going to select a different data store here. Um, again, context menu is very nice. You can edit it, you can delete it, and we can snapshot it. Um, from an editing standpoint, from an existing, select that. Let's go in here and then kind of show you what your options are there. maybe bogging it down just a tad here. Here we go. So, I mean, really all you're doing is you're going in, you're looking at the, the, the settings or the configuration for this particular data store, which then it passes on to the underlying volume. Um, and we can see already um, how full it is. If we wanted to, we could make this um, bigger. Now, generally speaking, standard data stores can't be um, made smaller. We'd have to actually um, remove the data store from vCenter, go in, shrink the volume, and then remap it um, as a new data store if we wanted to make it smaller. But we could make it larger. So from a size standpoint, let's see what we got here. Um, so we can go in and change thresholds. 
there's stuff running in this right now, so we can't really do anything. We can change our snapshotting option. Um, so I'm actually going to go in. I'm going to turn off snapshotting on this particular one. Or if we wanted to choose a different schedule, we could have done that. And we can go in and we can set up class of service. And we're going to limit this to 500 IOPS on this particular volume. And warning, it's not protected. I know because I turned off snapshotting and then it's going to go through. And so now it's building a script. And then it will apply that script to the array. Um, all through the open APIs and REST um, commands and stuff that are set up within the array, scripted right here from vSphere. And we can already see right here, right, they're doing some completion. The clone is still working on itself. Um, might be hanging up a little bit. I didn't verify that that snapshot was legitimate snapshot. We'll let it do its thing, though. And then we're doing a rescan on HBAs as we modified the other. Um, this particular volume. So those are some of the options you have from a management standpoint for an existing data store that, that, is, that is running on a nimble array. Um, again, you've got options to delete and uh, snapshot as well. We'll uh, actually for this particular one, why don't we go in here and I'll show you. If you wanted to take a snapshot of it on the volume level, um, rather than taking a snapshot and having it take up more space, right? Because um, snapshots in the nimble array are redirect on right snapshots. They take up very little space, only delta since the last one. Whereas if you took a snapshot in VMware, it would take up significantly more space than that. Um, and again, that kind of depends on what's going on there as well. But um, uh, oh, it doesn't like the space in there. Do have to follow naming conventions that Linux wants. That does help if you can spell snapshot. There we go. And we're going to take that snapshot. Now, granted, this can be a manual snapshot. It's not going to be associated with any schedule. So if I ever want to get rid of that, I'm going to have to go in and delete it. Um, all right. So let's see. Right down here, again, it's doing a rescan. That snapshot's instantaneous. There's not really nothing else going on there. Now, that's managing the stuff that's there, and those are pretty straightforward. Um, it does require that you know you have your um, snapshot configurations and volumes that already exist, but what if you don't have a volume there or you have a new data store that doesn't already exist? How would you go about um, managing or creating that? Now, that's also pretty pretty easy. So in this particular case, we'll select our site. And if we right click there, um, we have a context menu as well for nimble storage where we can create, we can enable iSCSI or disable iSCSI digest, or we can mount. So if there's a volume on the array, but it isn't mapped to a data store yet, that's where the mount option will come in. But we're going to work through the process of creating a new data store. As we select this particular piece, it's going to go out and it's going to look for those arrays that are connect it's connected to. Now, this isn't a lab. Last time I checked this, it wasn't actually registering all of the arrays, but we'll see which ones it comes up with. It's pretty dynamic. Now, it looks like we've got a we've got a few arrays in there, um, and one of them is offline, the 500. But we've got two online arrays that we can create um, a volume slash data store on. So let's go ahead and look at the one that's got the most free space. That's this guy, PLU Lab Main. Um, and it's running up the, a little bit older code, but that's just fine. So we're going to select that guy, and we're telling it what pool do we want to be in. And we'll hit Next, give it a data store name, JH um, Test. Uh, VMware, and I'll just put this in here because it does get kind of messy, and um, I do recommend documenting everything. So okay, 
So the next thing is going to want, right? We're naming our data store, but the other piece is it's going to ask what host you want to have access to it. Now, normally when you log into the array, you have to create what are called I groups, which are basically just access control lists for iSCSI that dictate which IQNs can connect to a given volume. When we do this, we don't have to go look up those IQNs on the hosts or anything. We can simply select the host that we want to have access to the volume, and it will automatically create that I group on the array when it's scripted and it runs. In this particular case, I want all the hosts in our lab environment to be able to have access, so that way I can do storage of emotions between the different hosts. So I simply select the nimble site. And um, also, I, this is also where we can enable encryption on a particular volume. And I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. So I'm going to enable encryption. It'll tell us it's 256 bit encryption for this particular data store for the underlying volume. And we'll hit next. Now we're going to say what size we want it to be. Um, we're going to go relatively um, small. I'm going to just do a nice 100 gig. Um, data store doesn't need to be very big but there are multiple pools this is two different arrays that are grouped together um, one is a hybrid array and one is an all flash array we're going to put this on the hybrid array and then we're going to choose what folder it's going to be in now folders are usually just logical way of designating where volume is going to reside on the array much like VMware right where you're just finding a way to organize things you can also apply settings some settings at a folder level like um, QoS settings and things of that nature so I'm going to go ahead and choose mine uh, this way I can find my volume easily and I can clean up my mess later there's really no reason to change your um, uh, your thresholds and stuff for snapshotting and data stores um, unless there and, and if there were you wouldn't understand that and you be able to change the things but basically at 80 percent full it's going to start telling you your game full. next here um, it's going to allow us to choose some data protection again data protection is all built out in volume collections and volume collections are just a makeup of snapshot schedules and settings for retention of snapshots and whether or not snapshots are going to be replicated this is also where you can tell whether or not you want to do synchronization with your snapshots with eCenter so you can have application consistent snapshots for transactional applications like SQL or Exchange or SharePoint or something of that nature. So you can protect it as a standalone, you can join an existing volume, or you can create a new volume collection. In this particular case, I had actually previously set up the volume collection for my Windows servers. I might go ahead and choose that option here and let's see if it has. So here's some test ones that I put in there. Uh, Oh, that was on the other that was on the other array. So I don't have my Windows Server one in here. I should. Let me see. I'm gonna go back through here and see if we can find it. As you can tell in a lab environment, it can start getting very messy. Servers, there it is. So I had created a volume collection called JH Servers, which is just basically a set of hourly and daily snapshots with a certain amount of retention and replication built into it. So we're going to select that. It's going to join that, which means once this volume is collected, it's going to start being protected. We'll hit next. It's going to tell us, well, oh, here's your here's your option. So I got like every 15 minutes, we're running um, throughout the day. We're also doing hourly and whatnot and it doesn't look like there's any dailies um, if we wanted to add a new schedule and stuff we could or apply a different template but we're going to move on past that you can apply um, quality of service or class of service type settings limiting iops or throughput at this point as well i'm going to leave this unlimited right now and then we'll just move forward gives me a summary of what it is i'm going to do I'm going to finish that. And of course, it takes longer for me to talk about it than it does really click through. You can see the actual process for completing the wizard should take you know, like 20 seconds or whatnot if you know what your settings are, if you have volume collection already created. Even if you didn't, you can create the volume collection right from that. So as that goes through, again, it's going to send that script to the array. It's going to start building out that new data store, and then it's going to rescan um, those hosts so that they can see it. And then once it's completed, right here, Nimble Complete Data Store, we're at 11% of that.
And so it looks like we are at about 100% on creating that new data store. That's about to finish up. And at the same time, it looks like we go down here. Yep, the clone finally finished as well. So while that finishes up, so we're complete all the way across now, the question is, well, what do we just do? We should have a clone data store and whatnot. We'll come down here and we'll see if we can find them. Um, and then we can put them in my folder. So here's my mistyped uh, VMware test. Good enough. And how do we name that new one? Is it done scanning? Oh, yep, here's the okay, and so here's the new data store, and it looks like it gave it. Oh, so here's my clone, right? Because I remember I cloned the Win 2012 CS420, and then it puts a dash 01. So there's my clone it created, and here's my my um, my test that I just created. And in this case, we're going to move these guys. And we're going to put them inside my folder just so that we've got them then. And I can clean up my mess later. It, is get, it does get kind of confusing when I mistype the name, though. Uh, so that is about all you have to do in order to modify or clone or create a new data store from your Sphere client. Very, very easy and straightforward. I hope that was helpful.